Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan's evil. And he'll, he'll, he'll bring deception or he'll bring discouragement or he'll bring uh, things to people's lives that'll, that'll get them off track. But you know, God is still God. Hallelujah. And just like when John Mark left the ministry team of Barnabas and Paul and went out and did his own and went back, and then they broke up their ministry team. Paul and Barnabas' team was broke up because Paul, Barnabas wanted to take Mark, and Paul wouldn't take him because he, he left and went away, went back on his first missionary journey. He said he wasn't, you know, but later Paul writes, says, Bring Mark. Bring him. He's profitable to me. For the ministry. God doesn't give up on you just because you had a misstep. Or you're not where you, you should have been at the right time or whatever. God don't give up. I'm, I could, were you saying something, Gwen? He don't. No, he don't. He don't give up. He doesn't give up. Amen? Hallelujah. I'll pray over these at the end. But I had, I had instruction by the Spirit. I had to do that. You know, we need to follow the Holy Ghost. Guys, y'all can sit down. I mean, y'all, I, could, I could talk, y'all could play the whole service, but, you know, I know. Unless you want to keep playing, but, you know, you don't have to. Y'all can go sit down if you want to. The Spirit of God knows that which we don't know. He who searches the heart of God is the one that speaks to us. The voice of the Spirit. God said through, the, to, through Jesus to the churches in Asia Minor, the seven churches, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. What the Spirit says to the church, the Holy Ghost knows what's in the heart of God, the Father. He's the one that searches the heart of the Father to speak to the church. And ministers need to be led by the Spirit so we can speak as the oracles of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So that we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Back in 19, back in 2007, 2008, 2009, the prophet of God, Randy Greer, was speaking by the Spirit of God that there was coming a divide in the church. I didn't know it was going to be mainly political. That's where it's taking place. It's taking place in the political arena. Church is divided. Harshly divided. I mean, it's, it's brought schisms and it's brought anger and it's brought all kinds of stuff into the church because people are not listening to the Spirit. And we need to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. And in our services, we need to be sensitive to the Spirit so that when the Spirit speaks, see, we walk in instruction, we walk out the instruction of the Holy Ghost, we get results you can't get any other way. Amen. When, the Spirit, when the Spirit speaks to the church, see, man can speak, and man can have ideas, but when the Spirit speaks, we don't have to say, Lord, bless our mess. Just say what he says, and he's already blessed. Amen. If God's already, if God says it, it's already blessed. We've got too many people trying to speak for God that what they think and is not blessed, and then they want God to bless their mess. The Spirit speaks to the church. The Spirit has spoke this morning. I didn't have that. I just don't make up stuff just to come do it just for the fun of it. Number one, I don't want to speak on behalf of the Spirit that which He doesn't say. We want to hear what the Holy Ghost has to say. And when the Holy Ghost speaks, and when the Holy Ghost has unction, and when the Holy Ghost brings forth that which is to be done. Boy, what, what happens there? Well, we, have, we already have right there a reason to stand in faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what the, what, what the Word says. 
Well, you know what? There's a spoken word, unction by the anointing, which we, we always measure that against the written word. But when there's a specific word that lines up with the written word, there's faith to stand on that. Amen? So, Gwen, you have now got a, just got a faith booster. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're, we're, we're going to walk places. They're, they're, um, the, the Lord. Just hold on with me for a second, guys. I'm just, there's things floating around out there I'm trying to lay hold of. Hallelujah. Someone came by me during worship. See, this has, been, this has been a transitional year. This has been, a, this has been a, a, in some, for some people, a difficult year. For the church, it's been a transition year. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, we've, had, we've had seasons during this year where it's just you kind of felt like you're out of sync. You know, we don't have a permanent place. We, you know, it's been great to be here, but we just don't have a permanent place. There's a lot of things. Uh, last week was, was, a, was a big exercise in, co in coordinating not having a church kitchen and a church place to work out of. You know, potatoes over here, barbecue over there, chicken here. I mean, hauling stuff back and forth. It was just a whole other realm um, that we never had to do before. But I heard the Lord begin to speak and say, this has been a transitional year. This has been a year where things have had to, you know, uh, things that have had to take place and things and adjustments and changes that have had to take place have taken place. But I began to see, oh, and I see, oh, the brush kuma aseta benda de to scuto on the kumba de de kuski to bang de ke dukuskika. Mesco si samande de scolala butiki ele de bang rokufu kika maske. La busule bitexile povere kamadriaka da da. But that which has seemed a difficult and a transition and, and, and a difficulty, says the Lord, was simply a season of preparation for that which is about to come. For the doors into a fuller and richer place are about to open, says the Lord. The, the, the weight and the burden of, of the past is being removed and the lightness of the anointing resting upon you, lifting you up and bringing you into the greater land and the greater place is now upon you. The doors are beginning to open. The light is beginning to shine through. And you'll walk in that place, and it will be a glorious place. It'll be a marvelous place. It'll be a place, even as in the old, a land that floweth with milk and honey. The struggles will be left behind. The glories will lie ahead, and the blessings shall come upon thee mightily, says the Lord. And the great harvest of the earth shall be laid at thy door, and you shall it shall be a great ingathering. And the souls of many shall be one. The lives of many shall be transformed. And the change and the transformation that they shall experience will be the greatest they've ever known. So stand back in strength. Gird yourself. For even as Israel had to pack up and run with the cloud, the Lord says this to you today. The cloud is moving. Pack the tents. Let's go. It's time to walk in the fullness and blessing of the Lord, saith the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power of God. We thank you for Jesus, who is the head of the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And see, I, I know, I know, I know. There are those who think, you know, things, things are passing me by. Life is passing me by. Ministry is passing me by. Opportunity is passing me by. But the Lord says this. I set the time. I set the day. I set the hour. And, that, and my timing never passes by. Hallelujah. 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 I predict that once again your dad will walk in his calling. I believe that with all my heart. The hurts, 
and the struggles and the difficulties will be washed away by the Holy Spirit and the stirring of the Spirit. I believe he's already starting to deal with him. He just doesn't know to talk about it. I predict he'll walk in it again. I predict. I'm not saying, I, I don't know why I'm using that word, but that's, that's what the Holy Spirit's given me. I predict that he'll come to himself and say, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. And he will walk. He will do. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we magnify you, Jesus. We bless the name of the Most High. We give glory unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, Samson had lost everything. If you probably gathered by now, I'm not on my notes. I am an unusual minister, and I know that. God uses me different. And, I, 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 and I'm not weird, but it's just different. I'm sitting at home this morning, and I just know God's going to do something different. Don't know what it is. Just know it is. Didn't know how it's going to go. But I know him. And I just say, okay, kind of like Dad Hagen used to say, when something like that begins to happen, he just puts up a spiritual antenna. I don't know how it's going to go. If it did, I wouldn't walk by faith. I'd be walking by sight. But I knew something was going on. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I just, it's just, there's a sense. There's a sense in the Spirit, see? See, when we're in tune with the Holy Spirit and hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, we begin to walk in places. We begin to see into places. We begin to connect in places spiritually that we cannot otherwise connect to. Because he is the God of the church. He is, Vicki Jameson used to say this. Now, if you don't know who Vicki Jameson is, she's one of the main, major leaders of the charismatic revival. But Vicki Jameson used to say this. She said that the Holy Spirit interprets the will of God. See, the mind, the heart, the voice of God is interpreted and relayed to the church by the Holy Spirit. That's why Romans says, he who searches the heart of God knows what's in the mind of God. Amen. He's inter there is an interpretation of the Spirit taking place. This church. Now I look around and I see we have, we've actually gained some new people. And when everybody's here, we haven't lost, but there's only like one person who doesn't come who was coming before we moved out of the other building. We've actually gained some new people. Hallelujah. And we've, we, we've stayed steady. I say staying steady was good for a season. Remember what I said back in the early part of the year? I said, we're going to take a step back. We're going to breathe. We're going to get our breath back in us. We're going to get refreshed. Because it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a difficult road. It's been a long road. A lot of people were wearied. A lot of people were tired. But now we're going to get refreshed. And, and then God's going to begin to... I see, now God's beginning The change to what we're called to is upon us. The change, actually, I kind of like this place. But I'm, I'm sensing so some changes coming for the better. I look at the finances and say, how in the world? Well, the, Jesus. <laughs> It don't have to be Jesus. It won't be, it won't be Ed. Hallelujah. I talked to Ken, y'all know Ken Cassick. I'm, I'm just going to share my heart right now. We're not going to cover my notes, okay? The Holy Spirit, uh, Ken called me. I was, I was doing a, y'all, I've kind of, I'm work, working some construction job trying to make some money and on the side and stuff. It's been contained at the church that I'm just doing stuff I can make money and I'm making money and, and uh, I got, my hands prove it. I've been, I've been, catching them on stuff and tearing them all to pieces and, you know, uh, get, took a ceiling fan to the eyebrow and <laughs> should have had stitches. I, I was up there with a drill, drilling the, the fan blade on, and when it torqued up, it said, Shoo! and my head was right up there at eye level with it, went whack. 
Huh? Well, I was having to hold something out of the way. I, I didn't have either hand on the thing. I was like that. And so, you know, Ken Cassett called uh, from Estonia. And uh, Ken, you know, I got to talking to Ken. And he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm not doing some construction, da 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 He said, and began talking. He says, this is happening all over the world. He said, he said, I know pastors all over the world that are, that are having to do stuff that they weren't having to do before. Um, and he says, I commend you. Because he says, a lot of people quit. A lot of people quit. And they say, I quit. Oh, aren't you glad Jesus didn't quit when everybody left him but the 12? Aren't you glad Jesus didn't quit when they all left and fled and denied, and then Peter denied him three times? Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't quit? And see, we can't quit. We've got to keep going. We've got to fulfill the call. We've got to fulfill the purpose. We've got to fulfill the destiny of, the, of what God's called us to do, and that is to reach the people, reach the nations, reach people with the, with the gospel. Let them know that, that there is only one way of having true life, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen? There's nothing in life that will satisfy, that will fill, because the satisfaction that the world offers is fleshly, but the satisfaction that God gives is spiritual. And he began to, he said, I just commend you for doing what you have to do. I said, man, I said, I can't compromise the gospel to get people. We're not going to put on our website we drink. We're not going to have stogie and, and, and bum, uh, rum parties for the men's fellowship to get people to come to our church. We're not going to have a song and dance light show with smoke machines just because that's, that's the cool thing to do. As a matter of fact, we just found out from our last meeting that, that quote, the millennials whom they're doing all this for rather have stained glass windows. They feel more spiritual in church with stained glass windows. So, yeah, people just don't, yeah, people just don't know what. You know, everybody's doing all these smoke shows and so all this stuff to reach the millennials, and they've done a survey. They like stained glass windows. They like liturgical-style churches. And we're all going cool and slick, and they want liturgical. Hallelujah. But we have to obey the voice of the Spirit and do what God's saying do. And there's a, there's a job for us to do in Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point, this Piedmont Triad. We are called and anointed to reach the nations, praise God. And let me say this. You know, Jesus ended his ministry with approximately 500 followers. And if you don't have a 5,000 church now, you're nothing. Jesus ended his ministry with 500 followers. And by the time the day of Pentecost got here, 50 days after his crucifixion, there was only 120 diehards left. Hello? And that 120 changed the world. I said, that 120 changed the world. So do not look at us and go, we're not a big mega church. We don't have rock climbing walls and we don't have, you know, uh, 16 people on the worship team and we don't have a smoke show and we don't have a disco ball. <laughs> I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive in Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> see, you know, see, if you kind of figured out, I used to do the dance floor. With the bell bottom jeans and the two tone platform shoes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, disco was my day. Hallelujah. Then I got saved. Hallelujah. I don't disco anymore. I don't need disco for Jesus. Hallelujah. But we have a purpose, and, and the transition to that purpose is taking place. God is, there's a door opening. That's the new door. See, we left the other place, and, and God told Abraham, get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house, and go into a place that I will show thee. When he took off, he didn't know where he was going. When we left the whole native five business part, we didn't know where we were going. We landed here, and this is a good place. It's been a good place. It's been a place of refuge. It's been a place of, of, uh, to, to land and to have a place to have a roof over our head. But it's not the land God's going to show us. Faith and Victory Church has a calling and an anointing. I have a calling and an anointing that I have yet to see the fullness of. Satan's tried to rob it. 
He's tried hard. He's tried hard through relationships, through people leaving and you know, people doing stuff. He's tried. But you know what? And, and, and the question would come, well, wh why don't you just quit? I can't quit. What else would I do? The only thing I know to do is to obey God. Yeah, yeah but it ain't, it ain't working out. Samson killed more in his death than he did in his life. Now, I don't have to die to bring more people. I'm just saying, Samson killed more. <laughs> Samson, in all that he did, in all his disobedience, in all his rebellion against God, in marrying the, 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 the wrong woman, in mar marrying a Philistine woman, a woman outside the covenant, and, and having his eyes put out, and being tied to the mill, and being mocked and made fun of, in his death he killed more than he killed in his whole life. God doesn't give up on you. He doesn't give up on his calling. He doesn't give up on his purpose. And we've had people walk away because we weren't moving in the timetable they thought we should walk in. Just walk out the door. And if I hear him say one more time that, that you know, it's around the corner, I'm going to puke. That's why I sat up on the platform one time. Like, Shut up. And I won't, I won't use it as a colloquial expression. I'm almost thinking, shut up. You know? God's timing is not like ours. God sees things in a time frame. We don't see it the same way. God is outside of time. And a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day with the Lord. You want it yesterday. It might be three weeks. I think of the man who prayed at Ramah who owned the land that Ramah's on right now. Old farmer. Owned a bunch of acres there in Broken Arrow. When I first went to Ramah, uh, Kenosha was a two-lane road all the way from Broken Arrow to Woodland Hills Mall, right there at Woodland Hills Mall that went to Five Lane. I mean, at, right there. You passed Woodland Hills last drive, and the road went two lane. And it was asphalt poured on a dirt road. Bumpy, holes. I mean, it was like, they just ran out here with an asphalt truck and poured it on a dirt road. Didn't do anything to it. Just hit, there was dead skunks every morning. It was old cowpoke town. That was 19, you know, 1980. Now you think back, this man lived out there in the 30s and 40s. He would go out there and pray every day, God, use that land for the nations. He died. Land got sold. Business went on the property. Brother Hagen drove on in 1975, said this is it. They bought it. Began to expand, kept expanding, kept expanding. Well, somebody came in and started doing some research. Went and got, got talking to the family, old family members about the land. They said, yeah, Grandpa used to go out and pray every day on this little knoll. And you got to understand, a knoll in Broken Era is an ant hill. Boom. Okay? And um, that God would use that property to reach the nations. God's timing is not our timing. And he started doing some research and talking to the family and kind of getting geographic whatever. And they discovered that the place that the little knoll was is right in the middle of the footprint of Raymond Bible Church. It's reaching the nations. We go home for worldwide homecoming. And they're bringing flags in from all the nations that Rhema graduates are in. They're all, over, they're all over the world. We have 283 campuses in 55 nations with 15,000 students every month. We're touching the nations. When I say that this, what looked like a small thing and a small prayer in a small time frame is now being fulfilled and brought to fruition and is touching the world God has spoken about us, and it looks like the time frame hasn't ever going to happen. I mean, I just be like, you start out and think, man, it's going to happen tomorrow. It didn't happen tomorrow. When I first got saved, you know, if I share like this, I'm just sharing out of my heart, and I, I, had, I, was ready, I was really ready to go this way, but we'll go there next week. When I first got saved, I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I used to speak in an Oriental language all the time. I mean, just all the time. 
I'd be praying, I'd be praying in some Oriental language. And the Spirit of God said, you'll go to the Orient and you'll preach the gospel. I thought, wow. I'm buying suitcases. God spoke, I'm going to the Orient. I mean, that means tomorrow, right? Or this week at the most. That's right. That was 1979. Well, things go along. You know, I end up going to Raymond. I come back from Raymond. I work at my church for five years. Come to Greensboro. You know, we're in Greensboro. Uh, Mark Brzee comes the first year. We're there. We're in that old building down on Lee Street. And uh, we're in that building, you know, having services. And Mark Brzee comes to the area to have a meet with a church down in Asheville. And that pastor calls and says, look, I got Mark Brzee coming in. And I heard Brother Hagin talk about Mark Brzee, you know. And he said, he's gonna, I, I said, I'm just going to have him on Sunday, but he wants to do, you know, like three more nights somewhere in the area instead of just coming in for one church. Would you be interested? I'll say, I'll take him for three nights. Never met him, but I knew, you know, Brother Hagin talked about him all the time, him and Doug Jones. So Mark comes, and he said, he, at the end of the week, he goes, you know, we had, we had good services over that other church. He said, but you're why we came. We are supposed to be in your church. And over the next five years, Mark came uh, several times. It was 19, that was 1989 when he first came. 88, 88. 1988, spring of 1988, he came for the first time. About three years after that, four, yeah, about three, four years after that, we're at camp meeting. And, I see, and I'm sitting up in the, in, in the back of the assembly center over in this section, in the upper section. I didn't come three hours early to get a front row seat. They were uncomfortable anyway. I sat up there. I just come where I could get a seat up there, you know. I could hear just as good, you know, and uh, praise God, the anointing covered the whole building. I didn't have to be down in the front row. Because they were the uncomfortable chairs anyway. And I'm sitting over here, and Mark's sitting about one, two, three, about four sections over. And we're just sitting there, and I look over, and he, we catch eyes from over there, waving, hey, how you doing? And, and I turn back around in my seat, and the Spirit of God says, you'll travel with Mark Brzee in Europe. Yeah, Right. You arrogant, stuck-up, young whippersnapper little preacher think you're some big shot now. That's what I thought. self amazing I'm self-demeaning. I'm the, what? Mark? So I just kind of sat down. I thought, that's no way in the world. They've been going, actually, they've gotten into Eastern Europe. If you don't know this, they got into East Germany with, with authority. The believer in Germany, they started praying, and the Iron Curtain came down. Everybody wants to give Ray, Ronnie the credit. Brother Hagin's book's what got in there and brought the Iron Curtain down. The German pastors, the East German pastors started praying and exercising their authority as believers. And they said this, the iron curtain will come down, there'll be no bloodshed in our country. And Germany had nobody get killed in it. They prayed it down. And we, we love Ron, Renaudus Maximus, okay? All right? He, you know, he, Star Wars, he, he brought the Russians to the table, all that stuff. But it was really God. And Dad Hagen, let me say let me throw this in here. Dad Hagen said the iron curtain came down, and the Lord says the bamboo curtain will be next. God's going to get into, God will get into China before it's over. He's not going to leave a billion people to the, to the devil. So the next day we're in the cemetery, up in that same, walking up in the upper section, walking by. Mark was talking to somebody, and I came by and patted them on the shoulder. Just, you know, just, I'm not going to disturb them, but just let them know. I, I, you know, you, you see people, they see you, but you, I'm not going to interrupt you, but hey, you know, as I walked by, I didn't, didn't stop him. And he grabbed me and said, stay, wait, I need to talk to you. So I stepped over and let him finish his conversation patiently. He turns around and says, look, he said, I'm starting Bible schools in Europe next year. He said, uh, actually, actually, he said, he said, we're starting, this is camp meeting. He said, starting in September, we're starting a Bible school in Fallen, Sweden, and Tallinn, Estonia. He said, I want you to go and preach them. Now, see, the day before, he told me, I'll travel. You know what I'm saying? Travel with, travel with the ministry. Next day. I didn't have to pray about it. Yeah, you don't have to go pray about that. You don't have to go, well, let me pray about it. You'll never believe what happened, Mark, yesterday. I already had the answer. So over the next several years, I traveled to Estonia a couple of times, uh, Sweden, Czech Republic, England, Italy, Spain, um, France, uh, see. I, think, I think it's the Bible school idea with those countries and going to those countries. Estonia twice then during that time period. Um, talked to Ken. I said, he, said, Ed, he said, the Estonians love you. They still talk about you. I haven't been in 10 years. I want to go so bad. I want to go back and minister. But, you know, just, we haven't been able financially to go. We just haven't any money to do anything. 
It's an expensive trip. But he, he said, they, they love you. They want you to come back. And, uh, and I love them. They're just special. They're special. Benny got to go one time with us. They are special people. Aren't they, Benny? Yes, sir. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, about 1997, 98, around 98, Mark, you get his you know, magazine, kind of like the Word of Faith, I believe his Voice of Victory, one of those. He had, he had, he had a magazine. And uh, it came. And in there, he, talk, he starts talking about Asia. He said, I was in a plane, I was flying, and, I'm, and, and we're, we're flying east to come back to America. So they're coming across Asia instead of going west, coming back to America. And depending where you are in Europe, it's one way, half the, six dozen, half the, you know, it's about the same, whichever, whatever you're doing, just because of the, and it's cheaper to go east. Cheaper to come from through Asia than it is to go through Europe when you're flying. Ask Brother Bill. He got me a ticket to Bangkok, Thailand, $10,000 cheaper than going east than it was going west. And I flew first class in a 747 in the nose. <clears throat> Them bad babies made like beds. Hallelujah. They tippy-toed around you. Gave you, brought you hot ice cream sundaes with your choice of, 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 serve, of toppings. I'm like, this is the only way to fly. Hallelujah. But he says, you know, God showed me, he spoke to me and said, the same thing that you're doing in Europe will work in Asia. And when I saw that line, the Spirit of God said, there's your answer. And he reminded me that what he said to me when I first got saved, that I would preach the gospel in, in, the, in Asia in 1999, I stepped off that 747 on the tarmac in Bangkok, Thailand, 20 years after God spoke to me and told me what I would do. Twenty years. I knew it would happen. I had forgotten about it. Kind of been one of the things you just kind of put on the back shelf and went, ah, oh well, yeah. I'm doing this for Jesus. I'm pastoring. I'm going to Europe. I'm doing this. And then all of a sudden there's that door. God tells you things sometimes just so you can know in advance that when it comes to pass, you know he's talking to you. For no other reason than for you to know I talk to you. He's spoken to me about Greensboro. He spoke to me in 1987. We were in that little warehouse. I'm sorry, it wasn't 1988. It was the spring of 1988. We had a meeting in March. Had a, had a fellow come in, and while he was uh, ministering after the end of the service, I had, a, a, as Brother Hagin used to say, a mini-vision. M-I-N-I, mini-vision. And in that mini-vision, I saw the destiny of our church. And there are days I just kind of, you know, you kind of think, well, Lord, is it ever going to happen? You just want, is it ever going to happen? Is it ever going to happen? But the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That seems to be the theme this morning. And in that moment, I saw, I saw Greensboro, I saw the Piedmont Triad, I saw, you know, and gross darkness over the city. Some of you have heard this before, some of you haven't, so if you have, good. If you haven't, good. It's good to be refreshed. And in a moment of time, I went from the earth, I went up to where that clouds were, and it was demon spirits hooked arm in arm together, so tightly bound that you, it just it brought out all light coming down on the city. And then out of the middle of the city, a shaft of light came up, and, and then when that light came up, a hole opened up, and, and, the, and the clouds, that cloud began to recede. And I heard the Spirit of God say, that's the prayers of the saints. And through that opening in the whore, in, in, in the clouds of, of demons, Jesus came through it. And he stood on the earth. And the more, the more he came through, the more they dispelled back. And he reached down his hands and he picked up Greensboro, the Piedmont Triad, and held it up. And as he did, I saw like a genie lamp. It's the only way I can describe it. The spiritual things, sometimes it's hard to describe. It's, it's, you know, and I saw it tilt over. And liquid drops of light came and hit the city. This all happens in a matter of seconds. And then I saw a building. It was not 
the building, it wasn't to represent actually the, the architecture of the building, it was representative of what was going to take place in the building. It was a square building. It had revolving doors on all four sides, north, south, east, and west. And as far as you could see in every direction, there were people lined up and they were dark. They were full of dark. And there, was no, there was no life in them. There was no light in them. But when they came through the revolving door and went back out the other side, they were filled with light. The Lord said, that's your church. He said, there'll be a revival that starts here in the Piedmont Triad that will spread up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States of America. It's been 28 years ago. But we're on the precipice. Because when the church got scattered, the church got stronger. The pressure that's on the church now in our nation and the nations of the world to stop preaching the gospel will only make us stronger. And we ain't stopping. That little bozo came in last week and said we we're making political speech. It's not against the law to make political speech. We can't campaign. We didn't campaign. And it wasn't political speech. It was religious speech. You know? He's all uptight. Somebody complained. Some people saw the people that were complaining. They were just, you know, like Nazi communists just going crazy that we were saying something about abortion. Because they didn't want to hear it. They're going to hear it from me. They heard it. That's why they didn't like it. Because it challenged. Netherlands just has passed that a, a baby. Um, now, actually, they said that if you found out the baby is defective up to two years old, you can euthanize it post birth abortion. That's the, that's the world. But we're the children of light. We've got a calling, we've got a mission. And it's not to entertain people, and it's not to be cute. It is to bring the power of Christ to the hearts of men and women. So the yoke is destroyed and the burden is removed and the captives are set free. Amen? So if I'm painting walls and putting down flooring and trimming out houses or doing whatever I'm doing, I'll do what I've got to do because the gospel has to go forth. Paul made tents for two years. And went in one place, he had to make tents. He, had to go, he didn't have a livelihood. They weren't supporting him. He had, but he had, to pre he had a mission from God to preach the gospel. I remember the day I turned in my last job, full-time job, and uh, thinking, whoo, praise God, I've finally arrived. And it was wonderful for a number of years. And it wasn't fun picking up some of the stuff that I've had to do, but you know what? Jesus is Lord. The calling of God has to be done. Amen. And I believe we're seeing better days ahead. People are getting tired of fluff and puff. Some of y'all remember the old show, H.R. Puff and Stuff. I only remember it because my sister watched it every stupid Saturday morning. Had the TV, I couldn't watch cartoons because H.R. Puff and Stuff was on. Because he had a British accent. And she thought it was cute. I thought, dear Lord, you need some glasses. Anybody ever remember that show? Do you know what I'm talking about? You have a care? Yeah. You know? Hallelujah. We are walking into, we are walking into what God said do. And one of the greatest things we'll do in this next move is we're going to disciple people for Christ. We're going to grow them up in Christ. They're going to be stable believers. They're going to be full of, faith and full of faith in the Holy Ghost. They're not going to be cute. They're going to be powerful. When Paul reasoned with people, he didn't get cute. He said, I see all these statues out here to this God and that God and this God. And you even got one. You're so superstitious. You got one to the unknown God. And that's the one I came to declare to you today. Hallelujah. They thought they were gods. They said, no, we're not gods. We're men with like passions just like you. But I've come to declare the one you don't know is the true and the living God. 
And people are serving their flesh. They're serving their own gods. They're serving the God of convenience. They're serving the God of don't upset anybody. They're serving the God of universalism. I mean, they're just being all, but I am telling you, the God of heaven and earth, the great and mighty creator, the one who sent his son that he might redeem us from destruction. Hallelujah. We are to decree and declare him to all humanity. And we're, ra we're raising up a generation of believers. We are. I don't know what anybody else is doing. We are. Who will not come with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That people's faith would not stand in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. So that when men and women hear the truth. They're not convinced through a, a natural carnal argument. The Spirit of God convicts their hearts. The Spirit of God deals with them. And don't think because they walk away from you, cussing at you and all kinds of, Holy Ghost deals, deals with them. Peter cussed and preached the greatest sermon of the first early church. Repent and be baptized, everyone in the name of Jesus. And you and your house will be saved. Thousands came in that 15-minute event. Thousands came into the kingdom. In a time of great religiousness, and etc., thousands came into the kingdom. Can you say glory? glory? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what, what you've done here today. I know you're planting seeds of expectation and anticipation concerning the future, concerning our purpose, concerning our destiny. And I know that it's needful and profitable to be done so that we'll stand together under the weight of the pressure of the world to quit. In Jesus' name. And now we lay hands on these prayer cloths. Father, I thank you for the anointing of God that's transferred into these cloths. That they were taken from here and carried to those who are sick, oppressed, Thank you that the power of God transfers into their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. They're made every whit whole. The evil spirits go out of them. The diseases depart from them. And they walk in the fullness and wholeness of God. Spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.